click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in today's session we are going to study the two of the most important properties of any cement. When we talk about the most important properties, the first one is setting and the second one is hardening. Setting and hardening of cement are the most important properties. Setting means the cement has to set at the place where it is placed. And then second property is hardening. That means it has to harden at that very place. In this session, we'll study the setting and hardening of Portland cement. Setting and hardening of Portland cement. Over here, we're talking about Portland cement. Portland cement is one of the most commonly used and highly utilized cements. These cements are extremely good at both the properties and the properties are setting and hardening. And that is the reason why for almost all construction processes and almost all construction businesses, Portland cement is used. Let us study these properties in detail. The setting and hardening, these are the outcomes we need from the cement. That means this is the characteristic and the properties a cement should always acquire. When I'm talking about setting of a cement, that means whenever a labor places a cement on a brick, the cement should sit on the brick. If it does not set on the brick and it slides off or falls off, that means that cement is not useful at all. The second property over here is hardening of cement. That means if I have a brick over here, I put cement over it and I put another brick on top of it. Between the two bricks, I have cement. And if that cement does not harden, the upper brick will fall off. First, the cement has to set and then it has to harden. Both the properties of cement are mainly due to heat of hydration. Now, this heat of hydration is a very important term. Whenever I take cement, cement is nothing but a gray powder. I add water to it and form a paste of it. Whenever we add water to cement, there is some heat evolved. It is an exothermic reaction. Heat is evolved out of it. And that is the reason why that is known as heat of hydration. The second is known as hydrolysis reaction. Hydrolysis reaction is the reaction wherein the water will get converted or get mixed into the cement. Now this mixing of water into the cement is known as hydrolysis. So heat of hydration and hydrolysis reactions are two important reactions taking place when the different constitutional compounds in the cement interact with water. Now these compounds can be many compounds. There is lime, there are silicates, there are aluminates. When all of these compounds get mixed in water, then the reaction happens between these compounds and water. This reaction leads to some kind of heat that is known as heat of hydrolysis. And this reaction will lead to water getting mixed in the cement. And that is known as hydrolysis reaction. When the cement is mixed in adequate quantity of water, plastic mass is formed. Now what is this plastic mass? Plastic mass is nothing but a kind of paste or a gelatinous mass. This mass is very important and the consistency of this mass is very important because this plastic mass is the mass which we are going to use for the actual purpose of construction. Known as cement paste. This is the constitution of it or the consistency of it and this is the name of the mass known as cement paste. The two main processes are included that is setting of cement and the second one is hardening of cement. Let's talk about the first one that is setting of cement. Setting is defined as stiffening of the original plastic mass. Now firstly we have made a plastic mass or a cement paste by mixing adequate quantity or proper proportion of water with the cement we have. Once we make that and we form a paste of it, we have the plastic mass. Now this plastic mass has to stiffen at the place where it is kept and that property is known as setting which is also stiffening. Due to the initial gel formation and hardening is development of strength of crystallization. That means whenever we make any kind of construction related to cement, the first thing that will happen is always setting and after setting there can be hardening. There cannot be a reversal of these roles. That means there cannot be hardening before setting. Firstly, the cement has to set at its place and then it will harden. The strength developed by cement paste as any time depends upon the amount of gel formed and the extent of crystallization. Now, amount of gel is the gel formation and the next is crystallization. That means the reactions which take place inside the cement. 
make crystallization of that cement and we all know that crystals are hard and because of that crystallization the cement gains strength and becomes strong now that crystallization depends on the amount of crystallization that is being formed if i have high amount of crystallization i will have good strength to my cement if I have low amount of crystallization, the strength of the cement will not be that good and the cement will not neither set nor harden well. Initial setting cement paste is mainly due to tricalcium aluminate, also known as C3A. Now, when I'm talking about tricalcium aluminate, I have three calciums and one aluminium. So, I have three calciums and one aluminium. Now, I can write it as CA3AL. But since it is in the form of a cement, we can write it as C3A. Over here, C does not stand for carbon, it stands for calcium. Though the symbol of carbon is C and the symbol of calcium is CA, we can write it like that because it is in the form of cement. So, tricalcium aluminate is generally three calciums with one aluminium, which can be denoted in a symbolized form as C3A. Since its reaction is completed within a week, let us see the reactions of it. Now let us see the reaction. I have 3 CaO, this is calcium oxide, dot Al2O3, that is aluminium oxide. Over here between CaO and Al2O3, I have a dot. This dot means there is an attachment. Whenever I have dot, that means there are no kind of bonds. What are the bonds that we know? Covalent bonds, ionic bonds, and the third ones which are coordinate bonds. Apart from that, there are certain weak bonds also such as hydrogen, hydrogen bonding, van der Waals forces and etc. But neither of those bonds are present over here. This is just an attachment between CaO and Al2O3. Now what is Al2O3? Aluminium itself has a valency of 3. That means one aluminium needs to be satisfied with 3 bonds over here. So there are two aluminiums, so the total number of bonds to satisfy them would be six. So over here I have three oxygens, I have drawn three oxygens over here as well. So two oxygen, two bonds from the first oxygen go to this aluminium. And from the second oxygen, one bond goes to the first aluminium. And that is the reason why if you all see, all the three bonds are satisfied over here. We have a second aluminium over here. Again, we have two oxygens over here. The second bond from the second oxygen goes to the second aluminium and both the bonds of the third oxygen also go to the second aluminium and over here also the valency of aluminium is fulfilled forming Al2O3 plus 6H2O. Now what is the 6H2O? This is the water which we have added. This is the cement, the cement powder plus water. What happens over here is I get 3 CaO Al2O3 dot 6H2O plus 860 kilojoules per kg. Now this is the heat evolved. I have kilojoules. Joules is nothing but unit for measurement of heat. That means this much amount of heat must be evolved when this reaction took place. Over here I have calcium oxide attached with aluminium oxide plus addition of water giving me calcium oxide attached with aluminium oxide attached with water plus heat. Let us see the balancing over here. I have now instead of balancing each and every element, I'll balance of the compounds itself because that is much more easier. I have over here CaO, three CaOs on my reactant side, three CaOs on my product side. I have three Al2O3s on my reactant side. I have three Al2O3s on the product side. And finally, I have six H2O on my reactant side and 6H2O on the product side. That means this reaction is my balanced reaction. Another reaction which we have over here is C3A. Again, what is C3A? It is calcium aluminate. Three calciums with one aluminium plus 6H2O. We have added water to it, forming C3A dot 6H2O and giving away 880 kilojoules per kg. Now, this is a kilojoule. That means it's a measurement of heat. That means, again, it's an exothermic reaction. Heat is evolved over here. This C3A, that is calcium aluminate, on the reactant side, I have one C3A. On the product side, also, I have one C3A. Over here, on the reactant side, I have six H2Os. On the product side, also, I have six H2Os. This is tricalcium aluminate. 
This is hydrated tricalcium aluminate. That means there is hydration taking place. Addition of water is always known as the hydration reaction. And the product that we get is always hydrated. The gel of aluminates begin to crystallize and at the same time dicalcium silicates that is C2S. Now when I'm talking about dicalcium silicate C2S that means I have two calciums over here and one silicate over here. That means this C2S is nothing but dicalcium silicate instead of writing the formula of calcium or the symbol of calcium as Ca it is written as C and then it is twice and then there is S begins to hydrate in 7 to 28 days. This hydration reaction also takes certain days which is 7 to 28 days. That is 1 to 4 weeks. Thus the initial set of cement is due to the formation of an aluminate. The reaction is 2 into 2 CaO dot SiO2 plus 4 H2O giving me 3 CaO dot 2 SiO2 dot 6 H2O. Let us see this entire reaction. I have twice of this compound and this is nothing but my cement paste. This entire cement paste I have taken it as twice over here. When I take it as twice and then I am adding four molecules of water to it. What happens is to this entire cement paste water is getting attached and apart from water getting attached there are certain other compounds which are formed over here we have calcium hydroxide that is CaOH twice. First let us see the balancing of this reaction. I have 2 CaO and that entire thing is 2 that means 2 into 2 and that is 4 so 4 calcium on the reactant side over here I have 3 calciums over here and 1 calcium over here so 3 plus 1 4 calciums on the product side. Moving ahead to Si over here, I have in all two Si's on the reactant side because this is multiplied over here and over here on the product side also I have two Si's. I have eight hydrogens on my reactant side but on my product side I am having more number of hydrogens over here because this process is the process of hydration that means we are adding water molecules over here and that is the reason why on the arrow also we have hydration. Now let's calculate the number of oxygens over here. For that I will show you in detail the number of oxygens. Over here I have oxygen 2 into 2 plus SiO2 plus 4 oxygens over here. Over here also I have 3 into CaO plus 2 into SiO2 plus 6 into oxygen and over here I have an oxygen over here. So let us see the oxygens on the reactant and the product side. So on the reactant side the number of oxygens are 2 into 2 plus 2 plus 4 because we had 4 H2O over here. So from that we will get 4 oxygens over here and this is from the cement paste. So I will get 4 plus 4 plus 4 and this turns out to be 12. On the product side also I have 3 plus 4 plus 6 plus 2 and that also turns out to be 12. So the oxygens on the reactant side and the product side are also balanced. This is my next reaction over here that is C2S. Now this is calcium disilicate. So whether it is written C2, we'll just consider it to be Ca. So I have two calciums over here and that entire two calciums is twice on the reactant side plus 4H2O making C3S2 dot 6H2O plus CaOH twice. Now over here this C3 stands for three calciums over here because C over here stands for calciums. On the reactant side I had 2 into 2 overall 4 calciums. On the product side also I have 3 plus 1 that is 4 calciums. Then I have 2S on the reactant side, 2S on the product side. And finally we are balancing water over here. We are taking more water because again this is the hydration process that means the amount of water on the product side will be greater than the amount of water on the reactant side. On my reactant side I have dicalcium silicate forming tabamonite gel that is crystal calcium hydroxide on the product side and now this crystal calcium hydroxide will set and harden and will help in the construction and now moving on to step two that is the final stage and that is the hardening of the cement final setting and hardening hardening is development of strength due to crystallization so the first place 
that is the first step over here was the setting and in the setting the most important thing that happened was crystallization hardening happens after crystallization that is development of strength to the crystals that are already being formed after setting hardening starts due to gradual progress of crystallization in the interior of the mass the gel formed in this reaction shrinks with passage of time and leaves some capillaries for the water to come in contact with C2S and C3S to undergo further hydration and hydrolysis. That means after the entire process of setting takes place, hardening starts. And once hardening starts, after hardening also, there is certain place for water to come and get mixed with C2S and C3S and help in hydrating that as well. The hydrolysis reactions enabling the development of greater strength over a length of time. That means once we have made a construction, we can go back after a month or two when the setting process of the cement has taken place completely and we can just splash some more water on that hardened cement. That hardened cement will grab in the water, absorb in or soak in that water into its C2S and C3S that is calcium disilicates, calcium trisilicates and calcium trialuminates as well. And after soaking in that water, there will be no more space for any further water to get soaked in. And that is when we have done the setting as well as hardening both the processes of the cement. So in today's session, we studied about the two of the most important properties of Portland cement and that is setting and hardening. We studied how setting is important and which leads to crystallization. We studied the reactions of setting as well. After crystallization takes place, the hardening of the process takes place and this hardening also leaves certain capillaries for water to get absorbed in it. Both the processes are extremely important. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.